Before I start, I'd like to pass some acknowledgments. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Rossisi for his mentorship. Uh, not over, not during just the semester, but over the course of my cadet year. Uh, since the very class year, he's always been kind of guiding me in the right direction and giving me a lot of good information. I'd like to thank uh, friends and faculty here, my girlfriend for coming to support me. And so thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Even if you're forced to be here, thank you. So first off, uh, introduction, what is Dicopedia? So for those of you who are not completely familiar with the, uh, with the my dyke line, dykopedia, or a, a dyke line is a relationship or a bond between a rat and a dyke. So when you come to BMI as a rat, you get assigned a dyke. Not every dyke has a rat, but every rat does have a dyke. So that bond initially um, can span several generations or it can be the first of its kind. Um, and it creates a special bond, like I previously said, that is unique to BMI or other institutions that have a similar uh, identity. So what dykopedia is, it's a web application that uh, displays Dykeline, or displays your Dykeline going back to 2003. My original goal was to go back to 1974, which is how far back the recorded Dykeline goes, but for the purposes of the time frame that I have, I can only go back 16 years, which is still a sizable amount of data, and you guys will be able to see that later on. So motivation. So starting with the left side, what you're looking at is an extended Dykeline going back to 1974 that a rat wrote out during a resurrection. Uh, so it goes all the way back to 2019 and shows dikes that had multiple rats and those branches and everything like that. So that's kind of an example of something that's really cool, but what I'm trying to prevent. That amount of work, in my mind, is unnecessary. And when I see that, I think, oh, that's awesome, that's actually really cool. But I also see, instead of that taking an hour, what if that took a second? Uh, what you're looking at on the right is an example of what I call a dike line relic. Um, just kind of give you a little more information about a dike line and what it means to certain people. Dike line relic is the term I coined that's basically uh, an item that's passed down throughout a dike line. So that penguin has been passed down for about well over 15 years <laughs> through a dike line. So it's great, 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 great granddad. <laughs> so on the left, you can see a rope that's been passed down since 2009. Uh, a, or a belt brass that has been shined completely flat. Um, that's been, I think, the dike line for three generations. And a lock that was taken off of a broken door, I don't know why, but that also <laughs> spans back about three to four generations. So um, if anybody has any cool dike line relics that you want to share right now, I'm, I'm all open here because there's some pretty crazy things that I was looking at trying. So anybody have anything? All right. Okay. Renovation. As I said before, uh, the problem is that it takes approximately like an hour or longer, uh, depending on your dike line and how far back it goes, to get your dike line and to record it all. And there are several problems in with that that I'll mention later on. Um, my other motivation for this is I think it'd be a great conversation starter and increase your networking capabilities as a cadet. As a cadet here at BMI, we're all very, very, very big into networking and uh, what it means to be better from BMI, the Alumni Association, everything, so it'd be really cool if, to start a conversation with someone and be like, hey, I use this cool website that was, that's totally awesome um, that this cool kid made, and I found out that you're my great, 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 great granddaddy. 
let's get a beer or something like that. So that relationship immediately changes the entire dynamic of the conversation you can have with someone from BMI. And you might learn something cool. You might learn that exchange general was in your diet mark. Uh, it doesn't go back to general Pete, but it goes back to other members of the faculty here. Um, such as uh, uh, Sam Bachman or uh, other, just a few guys that uh, department heads that are BMI alumni. So it'd be pretty cool to see who's that dynamic was part of. Uh, finally, um, knowing your diet line and also being a rat born into a diet line can create a certain identity viewing you with a purpose that you take to heart and that you kind of develop over the years. And it's the phrase where it goes, uh, rats eventually kind of become their dice, is true for a lot in a lot of aspects. And this is kind of a cool way to, to track that, to identify that. So if the dice is REC, the rat probably has, or has a higher chance of becoming REC. Um, I don't have any evidence to back that, but I did think it'd be in my So creating that relationship and identity and satisfying that curiosity is another big part of Dicopedia and something that I want to introduce to people and make it accessible. So as Rachel Casusi uh, said before, this is an idea I've had since rat year. It was something that I heard of and I thought, oh, that's really cool to do. And I've been trying to do it every year, but I was always told to wait, do capstone. And I was, I'm glad to be given the opportunity to do it for my honor. Um, and the final part of motivation, which Dr. Susie also talked about, is that during Resurrection Week, the week before breakout, um, rats are often tasked with tracing back their entire diet line. So this is me kind of helping them out a little bit, but nobody has to tell them about this website until after they get their diet line. And it gets longer. System design. So this is kind of a general layout of the uh, application and how it works. So starting with the circle at the top, or the top center of the screen, is that you see the home page. The user is initially prompted to enter their query. Uh, so they enter whatever they want to search, so they search my name, Kurt Kaling, right? 2019 Kurt Kaling. The information gets passed to the right to the, uh, to the database, I use MySQL database, that contains all the diet lines, it contains three tables of diet lines and all the information about diets. That information retrieves, uh, based off the information, the user input, a certain data is retrieved. Uh, if there are duplicate searches, so if there are two searches with the same score, they'll return a list for the user and they can decide what, uh, what they actually search, because there might be some errors later on that I'll help figure it out. Uh, if not, then we're just return the best match um, and it'll be brought to the user. Uh, the query selected will uh, trace the results from the database and it'll trace, it'll trace the super and the sub dike line. So those are other terms that I made up that, uh, so the super dike line is all of the classes uh, more present to what you search. So if you search in 2013, your super dike line is 2016 and 19. Your sub dike line is the opposite, it goes in the opposite direction. So if you search 2013, you go 10, 7, et cetera, all the way down as far back as you search. So once all the information is captured, the, the uh, results are displayed for the user in a nice, beautiful format, and the user will be given the option to save the results. After that, the user will have to decide if they want to stay on the website, or if they want to leave or perform another function or whatever they want to do. Uh, I do have to admit, for the purposes of this honestly, I did not get to implementing the return the list of duplicate results or the save results uh, functionality. So I'll be talking about that later on as well. So this is kind of the overall structure of the database. On the left is a very simplified version where the user or the system admin will be able to update or edit the uh, Dicopedia database through CSV files. So they'll edit them locally and then upload them to the uh, Dicopedia database. So the CSV file you don't know is just a, an Excel file. So they change that upload it to the database, and then it's, it's live. Um, we're looking at the right as an example of a table. So the database contains three tables, each representing a dike line, dike line one, or uh, zero, one, and two. And I'll go, I'll talk about later why it's structured like that. But the serial number, it uses a, a primary key, a unique identifier for the data points. Uh, the dike key is gonna be used to track relationships, and I'll talk about how that's done later on. Uh, other data captured is class, first name, middle name, last name, and then suffix, if they're junior, uh, you know, Kurt Kaling the third or whatever. So a simple use case, kind of an overall functionality layout. The user enters the query, displays match dike line, and then you give the option to save the dike line. Um, as I said before, only the uh, end query and the, um, the first functionality, display match dike line, are available currently. So 
problem solution. So some general problems that I ran into during my project is um, or things that I wanted to solve were manual search and limited accessibility. If you wanted to find out your dive time at any point in your life at BMI, you'd have to rather come back to BMI and search manually, or you'd have to look online and use the bombs and search that basically name you put online. And those uh, those bombs only go back only go up to a certain date. I believe it's 2008, but it might be 2000. I'm not exactly sure um, off the top of my head. So solutions for this that I aim to solve is that uh, allow search online and then uh, create an easy user interface so that anybody can use it. So make this globally accessible for anybody, and make it so that someone in Tennessee could use it without having to come all the way here. So some specific problems is uh, how do we establish the relationship between rats and banks? And for that, uh, we use specific numbers to, uh, and IDs to create relationships. So on the left side of the screen, you can see uh, with the first uh, yellow circle uh, encompassing 713. That dike number, in order to find their uh, relationship, you use that dike number and find the ID of the person it belongs to. So we search for Joseph Amato, and we find James Van Wee, who had, whose ID is 713. If you want to go further, you do the exact same thing. Find uh, James Van Lee's dike number 884, and then find whose ID that belongs to, uh, Sean McIntyre. So that relationship goes back as far as possible, and once it reaches negative one, which you'll see up there, that means that there's a, there's no there's a lack of information or there's no information at all about them. Uh, other specific problems: how do we minimize execution time? Um, so instead of retrieving information from a database, can be pretty tap or pretty long depending on the size of the data. So to combat this, we split the data into three parts, i.e. the three tables that I talked about before. Uh, query, so whenever the person enters, we get their class, divide by three and take the remainder, or in computer science terms, we uh, modulate it, and we get the dike line. So if it's 2016, you divide it by three, you'll get zero. 2017 divided by three, you'll get one, etc. And so we broke it up into three dike lines. Each dike line uh, holds a respective database, so essentially splits the data into thirds, which helps cut down a lot on execution time in order to get the information. <coughs> uh, so more problems is how do we ensure the results are accurate and how do, we co how do we combat incorrect or inconsistent records? So initially, when I was doing this project, I had to go through the bombs and import, or uh, manually input everybody's information, I think I'm 15 right there. And I determined that, and also with input from other people, uh, we determined that a lot of the information in the bombs was rather incorrect or inconsistent. Dykes would put nicknames for their rats, or rats would put all of their dykes in their dykes, or something like that. So it was kind of hard to track, okay, this person's this person's dyke, which is pretty annoying. Um, so ways to combat that uh, were uh, evaluation, just going door to door, or sending out a survey to the entire course that people love, um, and getting community, and getting community feedback from that way, and also allowing the community, or community feedback function on the website. So if you do encounter a problem on the website, you're like, that's not my dike, what, what is this deal? Um, you submit a report on the website that gets emailed to the admin, and the admin will make the data entry, or uh, will fix the, uh, fix the error, re-upload it, and then it'll be live next time it's updated. Um, past 2003, um, actually, let me, let me back up a little bit. From 2019 to 2003, we have records from BMI of the uh, dike line digitized already. So those records I didn't have to get from the bomb, I got from the my admin system colleague and imported and then uh, were uh, used an algorithm to determine who belongs to who. Um, past 2003, you have to check through the bomb. And a method of cross-checking I used is that if we're searching for someone in 2000, for example, we would search, uh, we'd import 2013 and keep note of, okay, who is this person's dike? Um, and then 2003, okay, who's this person's rat? And see if they match. If they don't match, then there's a problem. If they do match, then we have confirmed data. Evaluation. So over a survey of 65 dike lines three generations or greater, it yields an 88% accuracy rate. Now that sounds pretty good, but that's horrible. Uh, I do not like that. Um, and that's, that's, that shouldn't be anybody recording an 88%. So uh, like I said, the way to fix that is to allow community feedback. Basically say, okay, we know that it's not correct, we know that it's not gonna be correct, because dike lines are uh, a loose thing in general. They change very frequently, and the data we have is the dike we were assigned to begin with. Uh, that may have definitely changed for a lot of people uh, when during the first year of being on. So we have a community feedback option to compensate for this. It's something we depend on uh, for the success of the project. The 
lot of information. Uh, instead of telling you about it, I'll shut up and show you. So you create your, uh, your show this home page to begin with. User inputs whatever data they want that matches. So first name, middle name, last name, I get search, and it prints out this list. So this is my tagline going back to 2004. So would anybody else want to know their tagline? Brian Hill. Anybody else? I'll take one or two more. Uh, first name, second name. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. All the way. So four say that it was completely wrong. Scott Hayes right, didn't have his tagline uh, shown, or there was something misspelled, or something wrong in general. You go to report a problem in the top right corner, put your email, whatever, 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 and then a description of the problem, and the date of the website, or something, whatever you want. <laughs> and then you hit submit, and it gets sent to the email address listed above right here, which the admin will have access to, and they'll be able to take the problems and then solve them later on. If you're more curious about the encyclopedia and you want to know more about it, and it kind of shows you a brief overview of things I talked about today, about uh, the purpose of it, how does it work, and then why the motivation behind it and everything like that. So check this stuff over here very condensed and we'll be touching guys with that probably can't read it, so I'll just move on. But it's pretty general information that I kind of already talked about today. Alright, so my vision. Um, so these are things I want that didn't really get around to uh, doing that I want to uh, have the entire recorded cycle line available. And going back all the way to 1974, having that information going back 45 years, I think is extremely powerful and very, very cool in general at VMI to have access to that information for anybody to be able to use it <coughs> and kind of reap the benefits of that. Um, have a fully functional recording system. So instead of just having it on the website as I displayed, it's kind of a bit of a skeleton right now. So I kind of make it so it actually sends the email to the user and the, uh, the user will get an automated feed or automated email return saying we got your report, you're good to go, we'll solve this as quick as possible, and then kind of set that back end uh, the reporting system up as well. Uh, also, create uh, the list of duplicate results, uh, which do happen uh, in some queries or some incorrect queries, there are duplicate results. Uh, be able to download the deck the, uh, the deck line as a PDF, kind of give people to be able to cut that off easily. And then also launch the full website when it's done. Either give it to VMI or have someone next year take it up and do whatever they want with it. So these are things I want to do. Um, and I really hope I can find someone next year to kind of pick up where I left off. This concludes my presentation. Any questions?